is Dmitry Asinovsky. I'm a visiting fellow at New Europe College. And the title of, of my research project here is uh, Cold War uh, Exported Revolutions, Perception and Reality of Superpower Interventions in the Third World. Now, I belong to a um, school of Cold War historians who believe and who argue that ideology was something that mattered uh, during the Cold War, and particularly uh, the so-called ideological worldview. So whenever um, the people in charge, the decision makers, were making even supposedly pragmatic actions, realpolitik actions, they were actually driven by ideology um, in their um, final motivations. Um, so in, in, in my particular research, I try to concentrate on a very specific element of this ideological worldview, and that is what I call the conspiratorial thinking, particularly about the, um, the violent regime changes in uh, the countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America, which were referred during the Cold War as the Third World. So whenever um, a revolution or a coup happened in, in the Third World, if we look at the documents, both Soviet and American documents, we see that the reactions of the decision makers in Moscow and Washington was immediate. They were immediately looking for the hand of their adversary in those actions. And in practice, that wasn't, I mean, that usually was not the case um, because there were local actors and local factors and, um, you know, they, have, they had their agency. Um, and uh, this was very often something that drove those violent regime changes. Of course, the Cold War mattered and the context of the Cold War mattered, but it wasn't always the direct intervention of the adversary that, um, uh, that drove those uh, changes. Um, however, if we look um, at how this perception evolved throughout the decades of the Cold War, we see, and this is one of the hypotheses that I try to emphasize in my research, that this obsession about the hand of Washington or the hand of Moscow was growing in time. And it basically became a thing that, ex that um, was used to, to explain everything. And uh, basically the, uh, the decision makers in Moscow and Washington eventually just didn't provide, didn't allow any agency to the local actors. So this is what I'm trying to do. I tried to take several case studies from the Cold War period and look into them and try to uh, prove this hypothesis or to highlight or to highlight um, how this um, conspiratorial thinking was working. And I also believe, I should say, although this is not the work of the historian, that with the end of the Cold War, the conspiratorial, conspiratorial thinking did not end. And even, I mean, in today's uh, political uh, elites and in today's uh, international relations, although this is not, again, the work of a historian to look into it, uh, we see similar patterns. The Cold War was something that made our times. And uh, for people who were, were born and raised during the Cold War, and those people are in charge now, the conspiratorial thinking remains an important part of their uh, worldview. And we see it in, in the conflicts today, just like when Vladimir Putin refers to the revolution in Ukraine as something orchestrated by the United States. I mean, you can say this is a personal perception of, of one man, but in fact, this is something bigger that originates from the Cold War. At least this is something I try to look into and investigate. Yeah.